Okay, uh, in 4.4, we studied the annuity immediate payable PCD. Uh, of course, it's not a surprise that uh, in this video, we will study annuity due because usually that is the sequence of, uh, of annuities. Uh, we, we begin with the same setup, meaning uh, we will have $1, uh, which is paid equally uh, for, for P times a year. So, uh, so it's, um, we have the payment of, the payment rate of one dollar per year paid uh, equally p times okay so which means uh, each payment implying the size of each payment so, or i should say that means uh, there is a payment times one over p uh, each period, right? or each one over p period. Okay. Uh, of course, now uh, it's it's annuity due, so the payment will be made at the beginning of each period. And Each period, okay. Um, of course, we still assume the the total number of years is still n, so we will have n years, meaning they are n p payments. So, implying uh, there will be, or there are n p number of payments. Okay. Um, so if you if you want to draw a graph. If you want to draw a graph, that would be so n year. So here, uh, still, you know, uh, n here is n years. So let's just analyze one, okay? Uh, the rest is the same. So here is one over p, here is two over p, goes on, which means one is p over p, obviously. Uh, the the first payment now is at time zero. So I will have uh, one over P here, one over P here. The size is the same. So here would be the last one over P and um, collecting all of them together, it would be $1. So that's why, you know, the equal payment sc scattered from uh, time zero, one over P all the way to uh, P minus one over P, okay? So that is the uh, basic uh, setup, and we will introduce the, the notation. And uh, what we use is, obviously you put two dots, right? Everything else is the same. So again, you know, when we, when we introduce this default setup, uh, we kind of take one year as, as, the, um, uh, as the measurement, because this P is the number of payments per year. This n is the total number of years, right? So year, year. But uh, uh, in the last video, we, we we already saw that we can change this. It can be uh, two years, right? It can be a quarter, right? It can be anything you want. Uh, but the, usually we want one year because that's our um, you know convention. Uh, of course, there are there are different things you can uh, you can you can try. Um, uh, pretty much it's the same because the first one you don't need to discount and the second one you discount by one over p the third one you discount by two over p goes on and uh, while the the last one you discount by uh, n p minus one divided by p right because n is n p so the moving one period ahead so it's n p divided uh, n p minus one divided by p so uh, you can do an EV summation to get the result, uh, but I directly give you, I directly tell you this. So, no surprise at all, right? This is exactly what we, what we anticipate, because we are dealing with due. So we divide by the nominal, the, the nominal discount rate. Right, so it's 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 the old story, right? Previously, when we when we are when we are in the world of oh, it's p not n. 
when p is one, when p is one, for this we divide by d. So now we have uh, p may be different uh, than one. Then we just put b. Right. So uh, that is the uh, usual sense. But of course, if you treat this as a standard level annuity, the size of the payment is one over p, and uh, we do a standard, so we don't need to put um, any superscript. But but okay, so let's put i here for one year. Uh, now I have MP payments, okay, and I will need to figure out the effective interest rate per period. So it will be nominal divided by P. Uh, this goes to the same as what we derived, and uh, I believe that's not uh, something completely uh, difficult to understand. So now let's directly do an example 4.16. So now we want present value at time zero. Uh, we have, what do we have? We have $1,000 at each month. Or at the beginning of each month, of course, for five years. And um, uh, we know I4 is 4%. Uh, so far as we can tell, uh, the, the question would be uh, usually in a mismatch. So here, uh, P is 12, but uh, what's given, P is four. So you will need to do the conversion, um, you know, from from four to, to 12, right? So 1,000 per month, then it will be $12,000 per year, because here is a unit per year. So let's use this notation. Uh, there are 12 payments each year uh, for a total of five years, right? So this is me using the, the new notation, okay? Uh, if I want to use the old notation, it would be 1,000 standard annuity due, okay? Uh, five years payment every month. So I will have 60 payments but I will, I will need to get the effective interest rate per month. That would be I after 12 divided by 12. So uh, either way will, will work. And um, um, one remaining work to do is this equals one plus I. I mean, we have been doing this every time pretty much, right? So from here, uh, if you want I, you can use the first one. If you want I12, you, you can use the second one. So it, it, it will give you the result. So basically here, I actually provided uh, two different methods to, uh, to compute this question. Uh, again, I always prefer the second one. That is because uh, this guy, I can use my calculator, okay, to, to directly give me the answer. So once I, ha once I have done the analysis, uh, I can quickly, uh, get the correct result. Uh, once we know the present value, the future value, okay, so let's use the same notation. Well, this never change, right? This is, this is always the same. This, this will never change because uh, it's, it's, it's the basic idea of accumulating. So if you, if you get your value at time zero and if you want to know your accumulated value at time at time n, so this is the value at time n. Of course, it's n years. Okay. Uh, again, it's no surprise that this is the result. Uh, for the same reason, you can also use the. Uh, you can you can also use this. Uh, let me let me write in another box. Right. We can also apply the standard notation. That means uh, I have payment of one over P for each one. And um, okay, I would have NP payments, NP number of payments over the, over the period of N years. And uh, for each period, I know this would be the uh, effective interest rate. 
uh, actually there's a there's a there's a typo you know in the in the uh, in the textbook uh, for for this one you don't have upper p so there's a typo there but uh, I think it's it's easy for you to start to uh, to spot that mistake uh, let's let's do let's do example four point seventeen determine the accumulated value. So we want AV at nine years of payments 775 at the start of every month for nine years. Okay, uh, here the good thing is this is nine, this is nine. Um, I can ask you a different number, right? So I can ask you here 10 years. Then after you get uh, the AV at nine, you still need to times by another one year factor, one plus i. Uh, starting at time zero, the nominal interest rate convertible monthly is 12%. Okay, uh, this is nice because we want monthly and it's given monthly. So uh, at least in this case, it, it, uh, the, the frequency matches the nominal interest rate. Uh, that is something good. So let's do the new notation. So this is the monthly payment. Uh, there are 12 payments a year. So my annual payment would be $9,300. So if I use the standard notation, that would give me 9,300 times by the new notation. So it's S uh, double dot. Uh, P, uh, S double dot after P, then I need to figure out uh, the number of years. Obviously I have nine years, right? I is the effective interest rate. Uh, so from here you can, well, let's say you can apply the uh, standard formula we, we just derived, right? So uh, you just need to work out with uh, I and uh, and D, right? So uh, I is relatively easy. Uh, somehow, uh, let me let me let me illustrate D again. So for I is easy. It's just the one times uh, actually twelve percent divided by twelve. Take the power to twelve, and that is exactly one plus I. So. Uh, once once we know I, we need to figure out uh, D, right? So we have the formula. So this would be the effective discount um, per month, right? So uh, that should be one minus it would be the effective loan per month. So it will be one minus the one year uh, take fractional one over 12 right so from here what we know is d upper 12 equals one minus this guy okay and uh, i will need to times by 12 right and the d is d oh, one minus d equals v equals one plus i to negative one right so uh, since I since I already know one plus i from here, so I can write it as right. And from here, I should be able to get the d upper twelve. Then I can plug in the final result to uh, to solve everything. Uh, but of course, uh, to me, at least that's my feeling is uh, the easier way is to keep the monthly payment. I do it directly on the monthly basis. So I need to count the number of payments uh, for nine years, each is 12. Okay, uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's what I have for the number of payments. And then I just need to calculate the effective interest rate per Months, uh, as you can see from here, uh, it's likely a lot easier than than doing all the all the conversion, right? Because uh, not only the the math here is simpler, uh, but also because 
this formula is built into your financial calculator, right? So let me let me finish here for 4.5. Um, we will continue in the next video for uh, 4.6, increasing annuities.